That's the $64,000 question, uh, Steve and uh, Karen. And uh, good morning, guys. And incidentally, I like your, your popular cultural references there, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. But uh, back to business. Uh, the clock is ticking, uh, as we know. As of now, we are about uh, less than 24 hours, 23 hours to go before the U.S. tariffs uh, kick in. It happens at 12 noon, high noon, if you want to think of it that way, Beijing time tomorrow. Uh, seconds could be minutes after that. Uh, Beijing is about to hit back. So again, it's official. They're not going first. They're going to wait for the U.S. to go first and then retaliate with an equal measure. Uh, tariffs of up to 25% on $34 billion worth of uh, U.S. imports. Uh, we're talking ag, soybeans, uh, oil as well, conspicuously. The question is, what happens after that? Because if China hits back, retaliates, remember, President Trump, Trump rather, has promised to escalate this to target up to anywhere from 200 to 400 billion dollars worth of Chinese imports into the U.S. And then after that, what happens? What are China's options? As far as tariffs go, I have to say, uh, you know, uh, there's only so much road they can go down with tariffs. Because remember, according to the latest uh, statistics last year's, China only imported $130 billion worth of goods from the U.S. So that's sort of a theoretical upper ceiling. You can't slap tariffs on trade that doesn't exist. But there are other options as well. We've talked about how China could, for one, make it a lot harder for U.S. businesses operating in China. It could block deals. And I guess last resort, we could see potentially a Chinese boycott of U.S. goods here in China, made in America. Uh, not uh, unthinkable because we've seen very similar things happen in China in just the last couple of years. Think about Korean cars in China. Think about Japanese cars in China as well. So, you know, this thing threatens to escalate. Right now, Stephen Karen, it doesn't look like either side is going to back down, which is why markets are incredibly uh, nervous here. So this much we know as the clock winds or ticks down, guys. Martin, um, I know that you're also prepped for a question on domestic RRR, the reserve ratio, ratio, reserve ratio requirement as well, and the cutting of this as well. Now, is this about domestic concerns? Is it about the market concerns? Or is this about trade as well? Or obviously an amalgam of both? Well, basically, uh, all of the above, uh, Steve, basically. Uh, this is the third time they're cutting the triple R. And think of it this way. Uh, the triple R is buffers, reserves, right? This is rainy day just in case money. They're saying, OK, banks in China, you don't have to keep as much of it. In fact, you can use it under eight billion dollars worth because it takes effect today to lend out, get that money out into the economy uh, because liquidity has been tightening, remember, for the past three years as China has been deleveraging and trying to work on whittle away its uh, huge mountain of uh, debt. What that does is it knits a tighter and safer safety net, if you want to think of it this way, under China's economy uh, as these tariffs uh, loom and as this trade war looms. Because at this stage, China probably needs as much help as it can get. It's a slowing economy, one. Uh, its markets, as you know, are in bear market territory. Significant damage and also depreciation in the renminbi very recently. And people are talking about maybe a similar situation to 2015, a big one-off devaluation. That risk is infinitesimal right now, but people are still talking about it. So they're trying to do as much as they can to, to weave a safety net under uh, the economy. But it's a two-edged sword, and here's why. It could end up being a, a bit of a vicious cycle, because if it is considered loosening as some economists think it is, it could mean further depreciation of the renminbi, which in turn, in a slowing economy, could impact purchasing power uh, of the Chinese economy and of Chinese consumers. So this is a real tough position that the PBOC is in and monetary policy is in in China right now, because as far as fiscal policy goes, the government said, look, we're not going to go down that road here. We're not going to do the usual FAI or infrastructure spending, etc. It's over to you, PBOC. So you can bet if this economy slows further, uh, you know, the PBOC's political masters in Beijing are going to be leaning on them that much harder to open up the taps. But with that comes the risks of a liquidity event or liquidity crisis. We've seen defaults rising in China. In fact, at this rate, they're on pace for a record year in 2018, guys. Marty, we've long spoken about China being an economic powerhouse. And now this power, it's afforded China 
on the world stage. And right now, of course, we have this dialogue where China is being criticized, but the Americans are being criticized more. And if you've seen the comments that have come through today from the Chinese, they're talking about these U.S. measures attacking the global supply and value chains. The U.S. is opening fire on the entire world. This is China now effectively trying to say we need to defend the trade system. It's looking for allies here in Europe. Can you just perhaps explain how important it is for the Chinese to be seen as power brokers on the world stage and why this is such a pivotal moment where they do get to criticize the Americans back? Well, Karen, uh, you're absolutely right. This is sort of managing the message and also trying to get a jump uh, on the tariffs, which are less than 24 hours away. But I have to note, uh, in those comments from the Commerce Ministry that you referred to earlier this morning, one bit jumped out at me when they were talking about how they would continue monitoring the impact of this trade war on foreign companies operating in China and help out uh, to, to mitigate any shocks that they might uh, feel because of this trade war. If this sounds like China's being generous here, uh, that argument is a little bit specious, and here's why. If foreign companies, if U.S. companies specifically, need help and are hurt because of the negative impact from uh, the trade shock, it would be because, most likely because, of Chinese tariffs on U.S. imports. This would be inputs that Chinese, uh, excuse me, American companies operating in China need, which would raise their costs, put pressure on their margins, as well as on their profits. So that argument, if China is being seen as generous, is a little bit specious there, guys. Hey, everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.